Hello everyone and welcome to ROS2 Tutorials. In this tutorial, we explain how to interface a camera with ROS2 and OpenCV. We explain how to write publisher and subscriber notes that will capture the image and display the image on the computer screen. The technique presented in this tutorial is very important for the development of robotic computer vision systems and for integrating computer vision systems with ROS2 ecosystem. Over here you can see a video captured by a web camera. The transmission rate is relatively low, however we can easily increase the transmission rate. The publisher node whose console output is given over here is running OpenCV. We use OpenCV to capture camera frames. The captured camera frames are resized and converted to the ROS2 image format. Images in ROS2 format become ROS2 messages. The messages are sent through an appropriate ROS2 topic to the subscriber node. The console output of the subscriber node is shown over here. The subscriber node receives the messages and converts them to the OpenCV image format. Then the subscriber node shows the images on the computer scene and voila! Here is the captured image and the captured video. This communication is graphically illustrated over here. This is the so-called RQT graph. Here is our publisher node that is running OpenCV and that's continuously capturing the images. Then, the images are converted to ROS2 image format and sent through this topic. The name of the topic is Topic Camera Image. Then, on the other side of the pipeline, we have a subscriber node. The subscriber node receives the images, converts them to the OpenCV format and displays them on the computer screen. Before we start with explanations, we need to mention the following. First of all, this tutorial is based on ROS2 Iron Irvini distribution and Ubuntu 22.04. However, after several modifications, this tutorial can be used to interface a USB camera with ROS2 Humble, Huxpill or with any other ROS2 distribution. In the future, we will create a tutorial explaining how to integrate a USB camera with ROS2 Humble, Huxpill. This tutorial will work for any type of a camera, such as, for example, a webcam. The only condition is that the camera can be recognized by the Linux system. In this video, we explain all the steps you need to perform in order to establish a ROS2 camera OpenCV interface. You need to carefully watch this video in order to be able to successfully implement the camera interface. That is, this tutorial is not for impatient and easy to distract students and engineers. Carefully follow and try to understand every step performed in this tutorial. Only like that you will be able to learn ROS2. On the other hand, we also provide a link to the written tutorial ROS2 and Python files explained in this tutorial. A link is given in the description below. Also, we have developed a tutorial on how to integrate a camera with ROS1 and OpenCV. A link to that tutorial is also given in the description below. Ok, let's start with explanations. First, we need to verify that the camera video can be captured in the Linux system. To do that, attach the USB camera to the computer and open a Linux program called Cheese. To open this program, click over here and search for Cheese. Here it is. And as you can see over here, I'm able to see the video. Here it is. Perfect. This means that the Linux system can recognize the camera. Before we proceed with the rest of this tutorial, it's very important to close cheese. So close cheese. If you don't close cheese, there might be a conflict between ROS2 and cheese, and you don't want to do that. Next, let us double check that the camera can be accessed from a terminal window. For that purpose, open a terminal and in a terminal window type this.
This command will list the camera devices installed on our computer. I can see two devices. In my case, the camera is video zero, and it's very important to memorize this number zero. How do I know that the name of my camera is video zero? Well, I did it by trial and error. I compiled everything and I tried with the number zero and it worked. However, in some cases you might see video one and video two. In that case, you need to actually do trial and error. You might have to compile ROS2 code that I will explain in the sequel with a certain number, for example, two. If the code is not working, then you need to modify the code and to enter the correct number. That is, it's very important to see the camera number. In my case, I double checked and the camera is at the number zero. Next, we need to verify that we have the correct versions of Linux and ROS2. We need to have Ubuntu 22.04 and ROS2 Iron Irvini distribution. To verify the Linux distribution, we need to open a terminal and we need to type this. And over here, I can see 22.04. Note over here that this third number is not important. The most important thing is that you have this Linux distribution. Next, we need to verify that we have the proper distribution of ROS2. To do that, first I will need to source my environment and I will need to type this. And over here, I can see IRON. This is an abbreviation for ROS2 IRON Irvini. Next, we need to verify that OpenCV as well as other necessary packages are installed. OpenCV should be automatically installed together with ROS2. However, it's still a good practice to verify if the OpenCV is properly installed. To do that, we need to execute this command. And I can see my OpenCV version, here it is. Okay, in the case that OpenCV is not installed, you can install OpenCV by running this command. Next, we need to verify that several packages are properly installed. All these packages should come with ROS2 distribution, that is, they should be automatically installed when you install ROS2. What are these packages? Here they are. The first package is RCLPY. This is the ROS2 client library for the Python language. Then, we need this package image transport. This package is used to subscribe to and publish images. Then, we need this important package CV bridge. This package is used to convert between ROS2 image messages and OpenCV images. Then, we need sensor messages. This package is used for messages and services related to sensor devices. And we need STD messages. This is a package that's used for standard ROS messages. As I mentioned previously, all these packages should come with the ROS2 installation. Despite this, it's still a good idea to double check if these packages are actually installed. To check if a package is installed, we need to type the following. First of all, we need to source our environment. After that, we need to type the following. And over here, we need to specify the package. For example, let's see if this package is installed. To do that, we'll type here rclpy. As the output, you should see the path. This is the path to the ROS2 installation folder. This means that this package is actually installed. Let's verify other packages. Again, let's type this. Then, let's check this package. Okay, here need to create space. Okay, perfect, this package is installed. And let's continue. Let's now choose the package, CV bridge. And over here, I will simply type CV bridge. Okay, this package is installed. The next, let's check 
sends her messages. Let's see, sends her messages, also sends her messages are installed. And finally, let's double check standard message. Again, you need to type ROS2 package pre prefix and then you need to specify the name of the package. Here it is. Okay, so we verified everything. In addition to these packages, we will also need to install a gedit program for quickly editing the files. To install gedit, let's type the following. And as you can see, in my case, the gEditor is already installed. However, in your case, you will see the installation progress. Next, let's create the workspace and the package. So what I like to do is to close my original terminal and I will start everything from scratch. I will open a new terminal. Then let me now modify the size of this terminal. And the first step is to source the base environment. By sourcing the base environment, we create something called underlay. Okay. This command will actually create the workspace folder called WS ROS2 OpenCV and inside of that folder we will create another folder called source. Okay. Next, let's navigate to our source folder. And in that source folder, we will type this, colcon build. This command will actually build an empty workspace. Nothing special. However, you still need to execute this command since this command will create this directory structure. Next, we need to create the package. To create the package, we need to navigate to this folder. We need to go to WS ROS2 OpenCV and we need to go to the source folder. Inside of this source folder, we need to execute this command. Let's analyze this command. ROS2 is a command. Then we have package create, then we specify the build type. This is pretty much standard. This part is standard. Then we need to specify the name of the package. In my case, the name of the package is ROS2 OpenCV. And over here, I need to specify the dependencies. My package ROS2 OpenCV will depend on several packages. These packages are sensor messages, standard messages, RCLPY, then the package called image transport, then CV bridge, and finally I have this package, which is actually not a package. This just tells to ROS2 that our package should include Python. Okay, so let's actually should include Python OpenCV. This is very important. Let's execute this command. And let's press enter. Here it is. Now, you can scroll up and you can see what actually happened over here. We created the package structure, we created dependencies, etc. Okay, let's continue. Next, we need to create publisher and subscriber nodes. First, we need to navigate to an appropriate folder. Let's see the structure of this folder. The source folder will contain the source files. Let's navigate to ROS2 OpenCV. This folder contains several folders and files. For us, the most important folder is this one. So I will type cd ROS2 OpenCV to navigate to that folder. Inside of this folder, we will place our publisher and subscriber nodes. Let's create the publisher node. The publisher node will be implemented in Python. Consequently, we need to create an open, or better to say, a completely new Python file. Here it is. The name of the file will be camerapublisher.py. And I'm using gEditor. Here it is. To make this video as short as possible, I will simply copy and paste the content 
of my publisher node. And I will explain this code line by line. Now, I will not actually use gEditor to explain this code for the following reasons. First of all, I noticed that sometimes in the new Ubuntu version, gEditor for some reason doesn't align properly tabs. For example, when you start a class, you need to press tab to properly align the code under this class. Then again, under this function that is under this construction, again, you need to press two tabs to have another alignment. I noticed that sometimes gEditor is not performing this correctly. And consequently, I will use another software to explain this file. And I strongly suggest you to consider some other software when you enter the file. Of course, most likely you will not have problems with gEditor. However, I'm just warning you. The best option is actually to stick to your standard editor. In my case, I will be using Spider Editor. However, you also might be using, for example, um, CV or Microsoft some version of Code Editor. Next, I will save this file and I will close gEditor. Then I will go back to my terminal, I will open a new terminal and in this new terminal I will start my Anaconda and my Spider. I created a special video that is a separate video tutorial explaining how to install Anaconda and Spider Editor. You can watch my video tutorial in order to learn how to use Spider. But again, you don't need to use Spider. You can use your favorite Python editor. To start Anaconda, I'll type this. And inside, I will type Anaconda Navigator. And this should start my Anaconda Navigator and I will open Spider. Let's wait for a while. And here's my Spider. I will simply launch Spider. Then I will close the previously opened file. I will click on File, I will click on Open, and I will locate my workspace folder. Here it is, go to Source, once more, and here's my Camera Publisher. Okay, let's explain this code line by line. The first step is to import the necessary libraries. This is how we import OpenCV. Then, we need to import ROS2 packages, modules, and libraries. First of all, we need to import RCLPY. Then, from sensormessages.message, we import image. Then, over here, from rclpy.node, we import node. And over here, from CVBridge, we import CVBridge. Then, we define this class. This class will actually implement our publisher node. Over here, the argument of this clad, class called node means that the publisher node class inherits or is a child of the class called node. The class node is a standard ROS2 class. Over here, we can see a constructor of our class. This function is used to initialize the attributes of the parent class. That is, this function calls the constructor of the base class. Over here, we create an instance of the OpenCV video capture object. This is the camera device number over here. At the beginning of this video tutorial, I explained that it's very important to verify the camera device number. Let's do it once more. So go back to the terminal and type this. We can see that we have two devices. In my case, the camera is actually video zero. Consequently, over here, I need to specify zero. However, in your case, the camera might be one. And you need to, for example, enter one over here. How do you know is it zero or one? Well, it's a trial and error. I start with zero and I simply compile my code and if I don't get an error, good. However, if I get an error, I know that the camera device number is one. This line is used to create a video capture object. Over here, I specify the camera device number. Next, I need to create a CV bridge object. 
CVBridge is used to convert OpenCV images to ROS2 images that can be sent through the appropriate topics, and vice versa. Then, over here, I'm defining the name of the topic used to transfer the camera images. This topic name should match the topic name in the subscriber node, and this is very important. Once we write the subscriber node, we need to use the same name for the topic that's used to transfer the images. Over here, we define the buffer size for storing the images. And with this function, we actually create our publisher. This publisher will publish messages of the type image. And if I scroll all the way up, I can see that from sensor messages dot message I import image. This is the first argument. That is, the first argument of the create publisher is the type of the messages that we want to publish. Then the second argument is this one, is the name of the topic. Here it is. And the third argument is the buffer side. Next. I define the communication period in seconds. This means that every 0.02 second, I will actually send an image. However, it might be the case that your camera is not fast enough. This is basically 50 Hertz. However, I think that my camera is maybe 30 Hertz. Consequently, this might not work. However, you should try as fast as possible communication. Then, we create the timer object that calls the function self.timer callback every 0.02 seconds. That is, it will call this function that we'll define later. We specify the period of communication and we specify the name of the timer callback function. And over here, I simply initialize an integer used to store the number of image that's being transmitted through the topic. Here's our callback function. This function is used to publish the image. Over here, we actually read the image from our camera. We use the function dot read. And again, OpenCV camera object is defined over here. That is, this is a video capture object. It's defined in the constructor. Here we read the image from the camera, and over here I call the function resize. I specify the frame, that is our image. I specify the dimension, and I specify the interpolation. This function will resize our image. And I forgot to mention that our read function actually returns two values. The first value is success. It's actually a Boolean variable, true, if you are able to read the image and false if you are not able to read the image. And the second output is actually our image. Now, if we are able to read the frame or read the image, that is, if success is equal to true, we convert from OpenCV to ROS2 image format. We use this function, that is, we call bridge object dot cv2 to image messages and we specify the name of the image. This function returns the image in ROS2 format. And finally, we call the publish method of our publisher and we specify the name of the message. That is, we specify the name of our image. After that, we log to our console a message publishing image and we specify the number over here and we update the image counter. And that's it. This is the main function that is at the same time the entry point of our code. We will define later on the entry point. What do I do over here? I initialize rclpy. Then I create the publisher object. And over here I spin. This spin function will actually call timer callback function and we, it will call this function iteratively. And finally we destroy and we shut down. And this is the standard part of every Python class. That was our publisher node and next let's create the subscriber node. 
the name of the subscriber node will be subscriber image. So let's create the Python file. Again, to save time, I will simply copy and paste my subscriber node. Here it is. Then to explain this code, I will open Spider and I will load this file from my Spider. So where is the file? I didn't save the file, that's the issue. So I will save this file. Then I will go to Spider, File, Open, and here it is. Let's explain this file line by line. Again, we import the necessary libraries. We import OpenCV and we import RCLPY and these three lines are identical to the lines from our publisher file. Okay, then again, we define this class called subscriber node class that implements our subscriber. This class is actually inherited from the parent or the base class called node. Over here is the constructor of the class. We use this line to call the constructor of our base class. We specify the name of the node, subscriber node. Then we create CV bridge object. Then over here, we define the name of the topic that's used to transfer the images. Note over here that this name precisely matches the name in our publisher file. This is very important since both subscriber and the publisher need to know the name of the topic to which they should subscribe. And this topic should be unique. Over here, we define the buffer size. And let me zoom out for a second such that I can, I can explain this line. What's happening over here? Here, the function self creates subscription, creates the subscriber that subscribes to the messages of the type image over the topic defined over here. And we specify the listener callback function, that is the callback function that will be called by our subscriber and we specify the buffer size. And over here, this line is used to prevent unused variable warning. Here's our callback function. This function will actually receive the image, convert the image to the OpenCV form and display the image in the computer screen. First of all, we print this information to our console window, console window to better, better to say to correct myself. Over here, we convert ROS2 image message to OpenCV message. For that purpose, we use the function image message to CV2 from our bridge object and we specify the name of the image. That is, the name of the image is actually the received image message. Then we show the image on the screen by using the OpenCV function image show. This is the name of the window and this is the name of the image. That is the name of the object that stores the image. And over here we use this function wait key. And that's it, simple as that. Here's our main function that serves as the entry point of our code. We initialize RCLPY we create the subscriber object. Over here, we spin the subscriber node. And this function will actually call the callback function of our subscriber node iteratively. Then we destroy and we shut down. And over here, this part is pretty much standard. That's it. Simple as that. Nothing special. Next, let's get back to the terminal and let's make sure that the created Python files can be executed. The Python files are located over here. And over here we can see the execution properties. That is, we are missing here a parameter. The parameter that we are missing is x. x means that we can execute these files. Currently, we are not able to execute these files. To execute these files, we need to type this. First of all, for the camera publisher, and secondly, for the subscriber. 
and then let us again verify the rights and we can see x x x and x good we can execute these files next we need to perform several final edits first we need to create entry points that is we need to tell to ROS2 from where to start our publisher and subscriber Python files for that purpose we need to go to this folder And inside of this folder, we need to edit our file setup.py. Let's do that. We need to modify the entry points. I will completely erase this dictionary over here. And I will enter my code. Here it is. Here's how we define the entry points. This is pretty much standard name, console scripts. Over here, I'm specifying the name of the node, publisher node, and we will use this name to start our node. Then, the entry point is inside of the package ROS2 OpenCV, inside of the Python file camera publisher, and the entry point is our main function. So let's see the file. Here it is. And here is the entry point. When we run the node, this function will be executed. Perfect. Let's continue. Then, for the subscriber node, we specify the name of the subscriber node, and this name will be used to start the subscriber node. Then, inside of the ROS2 OpenCV package, inside of the file subscriber image, we call the function main. Where is that function? Well, here's the function. Here's the file, and here's the function. Simple as that. Next, don't forget to save this file and close this file. And let's continue. Next, we need to verify that all the dependencies are properly installed. To do that, we need to go to the base workspace folder. And inside of that folder, we need to execute this command. Here it is. And good. All the required ROS depths installed successfully. This means that all the dependencies are properly adjusted and installed. Finally, we build a workspace on our package. For that purpose, we need to execute this command. And let's hope that we will not see any error. Now, over here, I'm seeing the standard warning. This is actually not an error, and you should simply ignore that. This is the case for, for all ROS2 packages. So completely ignore this. The most important thing is that you don't see any Python errors, you don't see any build errors except this warning. Good. And finally, we are ready to run the publisher and subscriber nodes. So let's do that. To run the publisher node, open a new terminal and the first step in the new terminal is to source the environment. So first I will source the base environment and then I will source my package. And I will run my publisher node. Here is how I run the publisher node. ROS2 run then the name of the package and the name of the node. And let's hope that everything will work perfectly. So let's see. Okay, we can see. Publishing, 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 publishing. Good. Now I will stop the node for a second in order to verify this warning over here. So let's see what's written over here. This is a standard message and don't worry about it. You can later on adjust this warning and you can eliminate it. However, this warning will not prevent you from publishing the messages. And just to tell you that I stopped this code by pressing Control C. I can run again the publisher by repeating this command. Okay, perfect. Next, we need to run the subscriber node. For that, we need to again open a new terminal and in the new terminal we first need to source the base environment then we need to source our package setup file and finally let's run 
our subscriber node. To run the subscriber node, we type ROS2 run, then the name of the package and the name of the node. And let's see what will happen. Okay, here it is. Perfect. This is the image of the back of my room. Looks Okay, that's all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.